For me, the Dirt series has had more makeovers and transformations than Madonna. She pops out every album with a new persona, aesthetic and sound, and Dirt seems to do exactly the same. Whilst you can treat the series separately from the Dirt Rally series, which is purely simulation, even these Dirts 1 through 5 and Showdown all have these like different characters and aesthetics, and Dirt 5 is just the latest one. I welcome this because for me Dirt 4 was the worst of the bunch by far. I found it really um, incongruent with all of its different ideas put into a melting pot none of them really realised properly. So at least with Dirt 5 it has a narrow aesthetic and feel and it wants to be as loud and as garish and as American as possible to try and big up the X Games style feel that it's got. However, in doing that and becoming super accessible it in turn goes too far for my liking and starts to take away being engaging. And there's a fine balance to make between the two and I don't think Dirt 5 has it down perfectly. So my review is going to be focusing around that because it really hampered the longer I played, the more bored I got and the less engaging I found the game as a whole. So my review. <laughs> Yes, the game is the most accessible game to date, and the reason why it is, is not just because of the assists that you get, which make all of the um, grip and terrain um, easier to navigate and to drive on, which for a dirt game which prides itself on having like the ability to wrestle your cars around, the more you dial that out, the more unresponsive the gameplay becomes. It's not just that that's the problem. It's if you turn all of the assists off and go full throttle at it, the career mode is structured in a way that means that you barely have to even drive and race competitively to get anywhere. It's designed in this weird flow chart of events, uh, which pan in and out up from anywhere from two to six events that you can choose from, and each event has three stars. The stars, though, are based on... Only one of them is normally based on where you finish, and the other two are based on other things that you can do along the way, which could be do a certain amount of drifts, overtake a few cars within a few seconds, which you can almost always clear, do it going straight off the racing line and just barrel up, smashing everyone at turn one. Um, it could be doing a 360 spin, it could be overtaking someone whilst jumping, it could just be trading paint by smashing into everyone. They are almost always really low barrier to entries and they will get you the stars that then mean that you can keep progressing through the stages. At the end of each tier, and there's five tiers in all, you just have to have a very low number of stars to unlock those events and continue on. It's really low barrier, low engagement, and the story is told entirely through this horrific podcast that just keeps playing <laughs> over and over and over on top of all of your menu choices, and occasionally it will stop you in the game itself. I like the fact that the story is being told um, whilst you're navigating menus so that it doesn't kind of pull you out of the experience, but the two hosts are absolutely insufferable as they talk about how amazing they are and how terrible you are as a newcomer, um, whilst also one of them on the side being like, mm, you're making my co-commentator -com scared, let's knock him off the top step, wah wah wah. It doesn't land at all. And neither do any of the other bells and whistles that are going on. You get money through doing well in events and unlocking XP. You also attach sponsors that will pay you for each race and your um, clearing of these like mini goals, like uh, driving at a certain speed, doing a certain amount of drifts and stuff as you go through. And that money accumulates over time for you to then buy certain uh, cars that you can use in the different events as you go through career mode. The problem is, is that those cars are structured in a way that will be labelled S for like super and then ABC for handling and for performance. The problem is that performance trumps handling by such a way that there's no... Ri if you can drive okay, you can still handle a, a handling rated C car um, but have S performance and that will perform way 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 better than if you've got a s handling car and a c performance car and so it automatically drives you to just buying a couple of the cars from each class um because there's no incentive for you to bother playing with any of the other cars as you go 
The actual customization of the cars is quite limited as well. And a lot of it is done through unlocking different sponsorship modes by completing these ultra mini tasks on the side, none of which necessarily pay to having good results. And for me, the issue of this um, harks all the way back to Onrush. And we're going to go on a bit of a Codemasters chronological run through. And it's at this point with Onrush where something fundamentally changed in Codemasters DNA for me recently in, in racing games because it's still, it's then been had in the most recent grid reboot. Um, Dirt 5 is full of it as well. Um, and it's where they seem to think that pure racing is no longer good enough to hold someone's attention unless it's done correctly. And thankfully, the F1 games have not been ruined with this yet, but it seems to be that the focus is now you're racing, but there's explosions everywhere and you need to dodge them. Uh, I admit that I've just described Split Second from Disney, which is a fantastic game, but it's that it's not that you're racing anymore. It's what else you're doing alongside seems to now count for as much, if not sometimes more than the racing that I signed up for. And it's this shift in focus that I really struggle with. With Dirt 5, it was the same with the Grid remake, same with Onrush. It's missing the point of the reason why us as uh, racing and sim racers and uh, arcade racing driver lovers come and buy these games to go racing. The stunts and all of the extra effects and the mud going everywhere and being able to drift and overtake and land on someone's uh, hood on a jump that's all gravy that's not the main event unless you're doing destruction derby <laughs> so i hope that makes sense because it's it's a real mismatch and it it's worrying me essentially and so the issue is is that all of these different like little miniature events uh, that you're being asked to do feed into sponsorship feed into face-offs where you're having to do one-on-one -on -one races around the same track over and over again with this person who has got terrible ai and you always win um and all of these stars that you're going through through career mode essentially you can just roll in last most of the time so long as you've just done one or two of the actual events as they go um where is the engagement in the racing for that where why am i driving what is the goal it's confusing and it doesn't lead to a satisfying and engaging racing experience, which is what I come for in a rally racing game. So I get off my soapbox yet again. I feel like this review is going to be quite soapy. <laughs> get your sponges to hand. The next thing um, that I want to tackle is kind of we're starting to move a bit more positive now that I've got that rant out of the way. So all of this footage and all of this gameplay is on the PS4 version because you know you can't find PS5s for love nor money and considering there's no new games on it I'm not in any worry to purchase one yet. But the game handled for, uh, and ran really well for me on PS4. No bugs, no crashes um, or anything like that. No slowdown in the frame rate either particularly. I think I noticed it about twice on one of the really heavy jungle levels um, which uh, was good because I was worried about performance when you're doing that kind of bridge between two consoles. Um, but the issue with the tracks are that you get the same ones repeated over and over again, forwards and backwards, with slight different variants. Uh, but there's actually loads of other tracks hiding away that you just never really get to experience, apart from maybe once or twice max in career mode. There's a fantastic one where you drive in and out of a stadium in a like a one versus one uh, battle it only pops up twice you don't have to go and find it in like making your own races elsewhere whereas some of the other ones where you're going around in China and stuff like that pop up about 12 to 15 times just with different layouts or different um, car combinations or what I found one of the saving graces of Dirt 5 the weather effects one of the best things about uh, Dirt 5 is the fact that weather changes throughout each race and so does uh, time scales as well. So it can go from day to night, night to day, although that rarely seemed to happen during the game, but it can be done. Um, dry to wet, wet to dry, uh, dry to thunderstorm, damp to thunderstorm, uh, sandstorm, 
was great as well and loads of wind. All of that effect is absolutely superb and it changes up the race because yes, you might be going around the same tracks over and over again, but if you've then got, it's no longer summer, you've now got some ice on the road, that changes the entire way of how you go racing around that track. Change up the weather with it as well and you have these multiple variations and actually one track can go quite far. I just wish that, uh, particularly in career mode, there was a lot better balancing of the tracks that get used and why. Another thing that was really interesting uh, for me is that a lot of the cars actually felt quite similar and it was more around the uh, weather varieties and the um, ground that you was on that changed more of the handling than anything else. Get onto those ice rinks and you're absolutely slipping and sliding everywhere as you'd expect but all the cars slip and slide relatively the same, except for those horrific um, sprinter... Ah, uh, oh, I forget the actual names of them, but the sprinters that are in the Tony Stewart game, uh, where they go round with the massive spoilers on. I can't control them for love nor money. Neither can the AI, because they're all crashing into each other. What on earth were they doing in the game in their current state? Undrivable. Take them out. <laughs> And the fact that that gets more limelight than some of the other courses, which are absolutely superb to drive, makes me kind of go, hmm, why was that put there? <laughs> and so with that staleness of uh, cars feeling the same, apart from the terrain, the same tracks being used in the same variety of formations, and the career mode feeling uh, like it's got a lack of variety, career mode, for me, got old fast and by the time I got to the end of it I was very very done. The thing that we used to kind of pepper up uh, the dirt games beforehand was that you'd have a variety of other kind of little mini challenges and this was this kind of hit its peak in Dirt 3 to be honest where you had all of these variety of modes elsewhere that you could pepper into career mode and it would change it up. However for Dirt 5 all you have is Gymkhana and Gymkhana is great fun but even the Gymkhana element itself has been shrunk down. So they will take place in like uh, little tiny arenas, which is fine. Um, but you are literally doing a 360 spin, a donut, driving through some gates um, or drifting through some gates and hitting some gate pads. Uh, and you occasionally get some jumps um, and the ability to kind of knock down some pil uh, polystyrene barriers. The thing is, is that that polystyrene barrier smash up used to be its own separate event where you'd have to try and like smash as many as you could within 60 seconds. And all of that kind of arcade element has been withdrawn from the game and that's a real shame. I feel like the Jim Gymkhana events have been structured in a really basic and kind of boring way to showcase what could be done when you get into Dirt 5's best feature by absolute far and that is playgrounds. I love playgrounds. So these are arena based environments that you can custom build. You upload them into the Dirt 5 kind of cloud and you can download other people's and go against either trying to get the highest score or the quickest time depending on what you do. Some of them can be like little mini rally events. Some of them will be uh, challenges to try and like you can re-replicate doing that smashing of all of the polystyrene barriers down by just littering out a really good slalom course of these things and make that the only way to score points. So your imagination is ripe for uh, building up something really good in playgrounds and the fact that people have uploaded thousands and thousands of them, not all great, but there are some real corkers, by far the most fun that I had in Dirt 5 was in this area. Downloading other people's uh, creations, enjoying their imagination, finding that actually this was where the challenge was because even playing on the hardest difficulties with all the stuff off in career mode, I was quite often finishing either half a minute ahead of people or like 20 seconds behind. <laughs> One or the other, nothing in between. Um, because of the AI balancing's wonky. Whereas with here, it was you against the road uh, or, or the course or the playground that you're playing in and the object is to beat other humans. And so it felt like a real pure distillation of all the gameplay elements that Dirt 5 has in a fun little big planet play, create, share 
style and it's superb and I just I wanted more of that please <laughs> just more of it more things that you can do wider spaces that you can create in perhaps even being able to um, and I was kind of hoping that it would be an extension from what I started with Dirt 4 where you could have like a couple of miles where you could build in like a, a dirt track or something like that and then you could make your own racetrack out of it. Playgrounds is like that but you can build sections of buildings or you can put in drift turns and gates and really express your creativity or just make a complete and utter maze mess for someone to try and work out how to get round. As long as you can validate it and score some points you're good to upload. And by far, Playgrounds, the best element of the game, needs further development so that it can become a real shining feature of the Dirt franchise in the future. If this is just a one-shot finish, then that would be a real shame for Playgrounds because it is by far the best thing that it, the series has had um, for a very, very long time. I'm concerned about it because they've immediately dropped track creation from Dirt 4 because clearly um, the feedback on that was it's a bit wonky, oh dear. <laughs> the last thing I'd like to touch on is the DLC content for Dirt 5, having come to this game six months on. They're now offering a year one upgrade, which is £30, which is for 12 cars, 60 career events, which to be fair you could just make in freestyle mode, sponsors which add nothing to anything apart from giving you an occasional extra livery. The fact that this is £20 to £30 is an absolute disgrace. I know that DLC is often inflated in price and it's always targeted as a optional extra, but this is some of the weakest DLC offerings that I have seen for what is essentially paying for the full game again. Um, I would urge everyone to not touch that with a barge pole at all, uh, and it appears that even some of the stuff that's come out during year one is not even included in that DLC collection which is frankly a kick in the face for anyone that purchased it beforehand. I strongly feel that Codemasters, by pushing this kind of year one, year two upgrades for their games, um, without fully lining out exactly what you're going to be getting across all of those packs, A, as a customer and a consumer, you should be very wary of those types of deals because you don't know what you're setting yourselves up for, but B, it feels really disingenuous from a developer when you've immediately already put out, say, £30, £40 pounds for this game, and immediately they're like, cool, give us another 30 and we'll give you some more stuff. But actually, it's like a 5% of the content that you've already just paid for. So yeah, where do I see myself on Dirt 5? There's potential here. It just feels really misdirected. I love the weather... Um, dynamics. I like the way how the tracks are laid out. They're fun to drive. Um, the physics and the hull are really good. I really enjoy the fact that the track deforms as you go around and that you can feel that when you've turned off all of the assists, obviously. But its focus over completing optional challenges seems to be more important than the actual racing. And the unbalanced nature of that racing really hampered my overall enjoyment and engagement in the game, which is why I found myself gravitating to the playgrounds environments, which are a real distillation of creativity, content and gameplay action. Um, and so if that appeals to you, then I would recommend Dirt 5. But if you're coming here for a cohesive rally experience, I'd say get it but on a sale only. So. A written review will be over on highplanegames.com uh, over the weekend. I'm so sorry that this was such a massively lengthy review, but I had so much to say, and it's one of those things where you have to explain what you're what you're driving at and give the context on it to then appreciate the point that I'm saying. So sorry, but um, hopefully it makes sense. Any comments, leave them down below. I'm always interested to hear what other people have to say. I believe this game has been quite divisive, uh, and I can see why. But the fundamentals are here for a really great experience. Just needs proper tweaking, but I don't think we'll get it with Dirt 5. I think we'll probably get it on Dirt 8 when it's having its next Madonna meltdown. <laughs> Take care all. Bye. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. 
The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higherplanenetwork. Your support makes all the difference, and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.